Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today, it's been forever since I did that intro man. What I've got for you today is, as far as I can tell, the longest game that has been played with the new multiplayer balance patch. So the map is Grassvan and spawning right here in the top left hand corner, playing with the Red Terran SCVs, we have a man who I casted like a million times over the last couple of months, but for some reason not over the last two weeks. I I'm not exactly sure why. But we're looking at Bion's main command center and his opponent. Okay, admittedly, I have been featuring this player quite a bit from South Korea as well with the Blue Zork drones. We're looking at Dark's main hatchery. Alrighty, so I was just looking at my replay folders, right? So obviously the new multiplayer balance patch just went live. The new map pool has been in use for a couple of weeks right now. I was looking at all of the replays that have come out since the new patch went live. And it turns out there's one game that is about three times as long as every other game that has been played recently. Sometimes I think I actually... If you only watch StarCraft 2 content on my channel, so if your only source of StarCraft 2 is my YouTube channel, which, by the way, thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Um, you might assume that the average game of StarCraft 2 is like 17 minutes long. That is a little bit of, uh, yeah, a li a li a li it's not entirely true, okay? I obviously get to pick whatever game I want to cast, and generally speaking, I will try to pick the highest level games in StarCraft 2, and usually when the top level players are facing off against each other, and they're very evenly matched in skill, the games do go the distance. Overall, though, the vast majority of the games that are being played, even at, like, the Grandmaster, like, the High Grandmaster League ladder, uh, or High Grandmaster League level, rather, the majority of those games still end by, like, the 10-minute mark. It is very easy to accidentally lose a game of StarCraft 2. You didn't mean to, but it's very easy to accidentally lose. So, this game, I think, is close to, like, 50 minutes, something along those lines. For a game to be that long, something special must have happened. So, yeah, we'll find out together. Bion, opening up with a Bion build. Command center first, no scout. He knows nothing. Just went for a CC on the low ground right away. And then straight into double barracks. Curious to see if we're gonna add Nadon actually on that second barracks at all. So, it's reactor as well, by the way, on that first Rex. So, 22 SCVs, two and a half minutes into the game. That is all that Mr. Bion has. Is it gonna be a tech lab? I mean, yeah, it is going to be a tech lab. Okay, so he planted it over there, I think, just in case it would have been an early game spawning pool. So he at the very least had a semi wall off because with an opener like this, you don't actually go for your second supply depot for another little while. Anyways, Zorklings did run across the map. They're like, hey, bro, you want to come out and play? Like, there's supposed to be like a Reaper or something. He did already scout that it was a quick command center from the opponent. And now Jimmy, together with Mark, look at them. I mean, they're badasses. They don't even need to look in the direction of where that Zerkling came from. They have ice on the back of their... They, they have, like, cameras, okay, on their on their shoulder pads. They they can look sideways. It's incredible. But, yeah, they, uh, they are now charged with defending the natural expansion. Obviously, not something you necessarily want to be copying in your own games. This is one of those builds that Bjorn can pull off because he knows who he's playing against. And the guy he's playing against knows what Bjorn is capable of and... Bion is very commonly going for some early game aggression. He's obviously never shying away from building any barracks on the other side of the map. If Dark knew that this was a CC first, and this greedy of an opener with a reactor on the back of it too, he could have punished. But obviously, in a game like StarCraft 2, you always have limited amounts of information. And Bion cutting a corner right there definitely gives him a nice early game for sure. Alright, so what exactly is happening in the meantime on the other side of the map? Well... He pulled all the drones out of gas at 100, or I guess 104. He started up the metabolic boost upgrade, so that is the Zerkling speed. But for now, he is just making queens and drones, right? So we have four Zerklings here in total. Because Dark scouted that his opponent was being rather greedy, he is being <laughs> incredibly greedy himself as well. So it's going to be eight queens here in total, but just drones. He's just been holding down the drone button. And now a Roach Warren comes up. So despite the fact that this is not a common build, I guess that Dark has an understanding on, well, how he should face off against this? That Roach Warren is definitely not at the perfect time, at the very least when it comes to defending against a Marine drop. So a nice little Overlook snipe over here, love to see that. 17 Marines, 4 minutes 45 seconds, command center first. Honestly, that is a bit of a banger. Very sharp timing right here from Bjorn. 
He is uh, already at 20 Marines, I'm assuming. Yeah. The other guys, they uh, apparently uh, drew... Well, it depends. I was going to say the short stick, but they get to uh, sit at home and defend, I guess. That's probably preferable to whatever is going on over here. Good amount of units forced out of Dark. Dark is going to be able to push this back. More Zorklings are coming up. And in the end, uh, despite the fact that this timing attack was really sharp and he did an excellent job executing, uh, yeah, he's going up against Dark, who knew exactly how to face off against it. That said, the 16 Marine or 17 Marine push, not all too weird. That is something we see very frequently. Normally, it hits at about 5 minutes and 10 seconds, depending on the map. Um, this follow-up, however, is a little bit funny. So it's on the edge of creep. Dark doesn't see it until right now. Three Metavex and a Widowmine. Now, there are already Roaches coming out. There are still seven Queens available as well. Widowmine just died right away. Okay, yeah, Dark is going to be able to easily push this back as well. All right, so both players testing the waters a little bit. A little bit of a skill check as well to make sure that everybody's still paying attention. Even though the majority of the StarCraft players out there would have lost at this point in the game. Um, these guys are obviously very good. And because of that, the game does go on with... I would say maybe a very slight advantage for the Zerg, just because... I, I don't think it's really an advantage for the Zerg. It's just that I prefer this position for the Zerg, because when you play this greedy of an early game, you're like, oh, thank God, I defended that and it didn't take any damage. It's a good position to be in. It's a good feeling to have. Um, so as a Zerg player, at least, I like being in this spot quite a bit better. One thing I don't really like, however, for Dark, is that he is going into 1-1 one -one upgrades here for Missile and for Carapace. So that signals to me that he's sticking around on Roach Ravager. At least for the time being. You can obviously transition towards Hydras. You can transition towards, I don't know, Lurkers as well on the back of this if you really want to. But overall, that is a flimsy unit composition compared to what we normally see from Zerks, and that is focusing on an army that's based around Zerklings and Banelings. Zerklings and Banelings have a lot more longevity than Roaches do. So these missile upgrades, while they're going to be helpful for the next couple minutes, they're not going to be too helpful, you know, assuming this game. Well, we all know it's going to go on for a long time. If the game goes the distance, those missile upgrades do tend to fall off. And you preferably uh, yeah, get the melee upgrades here instead. But this is something that Dark transitioned into. He could have gone to a, a Baneling Nest when he put down that Roach Warren. So apparently he uh, yeah, wants to go and check this out. 1-1 one, one is finishing up together with the Glial Reconstitution. That's the Roach Speed Research. Dark could technically go for an attack right now if he really wanted to. I mean, he's got a lot of units. I wouldn't mind seeing it at all. Yeah, he's actually got Roaches scattered all over his bases. These Ravagers do take a little bit longer to warp in right now or to morph in, I guess. Nice Micro here as well. Morphs that one in as well. And as soon as the Cocoon finishes, the Ravager is going to be at full hit points. So good control right there from Dark. So 1-1 one, one is done, Roach Speed is done. This is the classic Zerg timing attack. Everybody who I've ever coached in StarCraft 2, I have taught you this build. <laughs> I probably, I don't know exactly how many people I've coached, probably about two dozen or so. But I've, I've taught every single one of them this particular timing attack, because this is the bread and butter of Zerg. Again, the majority of the players will die to this timing attack. The problem is, yeah, this is Bjorn. Good siege tank spread already. Stimpak being activated as well. Those siege tanks are lethal, man. The positioning on those is excellent. A couple of the forward ones will end up going down. There's a lot of biological units, well, running out of that main base as well. But look at that control right here from the uh, the Terran player. Just constantly pushing this, right? I mean, he's going to end up losing that tank as well. No, not, barely not. It's actually a little bit of mispositioning right there on one of those corrosive biles. Dark still with an economical advantage, I suppose, but only a very small one. And where do you go from here? Where do you go from here? When you go for this timing attack, you do, yeah, you do usually delay the 2-2 research. Bjorn, however, in the meantime, has started up that 2-2. He fired that as soon as the 1-1 finished. Second Factory now also has already finished up together with the 4th Command Center. And that means that Bjorn, he's got continuation in his current plan, right? He is going for, yeah, a continued push. Um, at least as far as, like, technology and economy goes. So, 
even though supply-wise, he might not be in the best spot. Worker-wise, maybe, he's not necessarily in the greatest of positions either. As this game progresses, assuming he doesn't lose here significantly within the next couple minutes, which I guess he won't, because we all knew that was a long game. Um, uh, yeah, he should be able to pull ahead as time goes by. Okay. Wait, one SCV showed up there? That is new. Normally, we only see when there's two workers going down minimum, right? Am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. I've only casted about a thousand... No, I've, I've casted more than a thousand games, guys. That is kind of funny, though. All right. That Roach task with just being an absolute nuisance. Dark still has a tremendous amount of units, though. The problem is, we are now getting into the 3-3 territory. So, I find that Roaches and Ravagers are good until 2-2. Then it's kind of decent, I guess. 3-3, though, is when they fall off pretty hard. Obviously, StarCraft 2, though, can still be a numbers game. And speaking of numbers, that's a ton of Zerklings going in. Siege Tank dealing some friendly fire there, too. Okay, good control right here by Biondo. Pushing this back, keeping everything up and running. Yeah, I think as soon as 3-3 finishes, the Marines are going to be able to start dealing with those Roaches and Ravagers quite a bit better. But that is still a while away. Dark is finishing up 2-2. Dark is just going full bulldozer in this game. That is one of the things he does sometimes. Sometimes he goes for that elegance, right, with the spellcasters. But apparently not today. Today it is just full bulldozer Dark. Roaches, Ravagers, upgrades, and that's it. He's even got the uh, Infestation Pit finishing up right now. Oh, okay. Good dodging on those vials as well. I feel like this is one of those games that is way easier to play for the Zerk than it is for the Terran, though. If you've ever played this position as Terran, it is horrible. It is so easy to accidentally make a mistake. Whereas with Zerk, your units are pretty beefy. You can make a couple mistakes, it seems. Anyways, Roach is coming in from the bottom right now as well. They're trying to target fire down the tanks, but that is a lot of Roaches for just one tank. Command Center here, burning, but still up and running. 14 SCVs did go down, but in the meantime... Bion secured the fourth command center. And what kind of surprises me, actually hold that thought, because he is pushing forward here as well. Now sniping all of the Ravagers. Beautiful moves right here by Micro Jackson. Keeping as many of those Medivacs alive as possible. And he now really does shut all of this down here. Zerklings though, okay, rushing through the center of the map once again. That is an additional two siege tanks going down. But I think that's going to be the end for the Roaches, at least for now. I mean, he's making more, so maybe, uh, I don't know what what, that, what happened in Dark's uh, what Dark Breakfast today, but he is just doing Roaches and Ravagers, apparently. And a couple Zerklings when he's got the leftover minerals. Anyways, what, uh, what surprises me, what I was going to bring up, is that Bjorn went for an Orbital Command at the 4th. <laughs> like, that is confidence right there. I feel like you only ever do that nice pickup on the Siege Tank as well, when you know that you're going to be okay. So he's lost a bunch of SCVs, sure. But, yeah, economically, he's caught up once again. Corrosive Bowels trying to land wherever they can. Liberators now also joining in the fray. Another tank does end up going down. Dark, I think it's time to transition, man. So there's the Hive. What are we going to do? Are we going to go into missile upgrades here, too? If we go, I think he's probably going to go melee, but he could have started up melee sooner. If he goes plus three, plus three missile here eventually with armor, I... Uh, hmm. I'm going to be surprised. Anyways, the gas instead is spent right now on Vipers. So Vipers are going to be joining the battlefield very soon. Keep in mind that Vipers are nerfed. So right now when they try to abduct something, they are going to idle for about half a second. Doesn't sound like a long time, but it really does add up. And would you look at that? Beautiful scan, by the way. But would you look at that? Prioritizing plus three missile. So Hydrodan is going to finish up here momentarily. Yeah, so he is going 3-3. That is really interesting. So what's the idea behind this? So while Vipers got nerfed, Hydras did get buffed. So Hydras are now significantly faster off creep than what they used to be. So the Muscular Augments research is queued up. It comes up after the ranged research. Those Hydras are going to be quick. Um, yeah, okay. So it is indeed going to be Lurkers. I feel like that's the only logical choice. So Lurkers are essentially the same as they always were. Very small adjustment as well to some burrow delays, but... Um, uh, yeah, the Brute Lord, as well as the Ultralisk, they got an improvement. However, apparently Dark is not opting to go for any of those units. The Ghost did get nerfed slightly, so maybe that is still a good enough situation for the Zerk. 
So the way that this works right now, a couple of changes to the ghost. First and foremost, I guess, e <coughs> excuse me, EMP. That is mostly done with Terran versus Protals in mind. Secondly, to snipe. Snipe can now be manually cancelled, but you can also force the cancel if the units run away far enough. Good EMP right there. Well, at the very least, it was a decent EMP initially, it seemed. Good split off as well for that parasitic bomb, dodging the biles. Okay. Beyond stays alive once again. Hmm. Bulldozer dark, man. We don't usually see Bjorn sitting sitting back, right? Like, normally he is the guy who is sending Metavex all over the map, trying to just harass wherever he can. He was ready to cancel a hatchery, but the hatchery drone was just idling there. The drones, or the drone rather, was spotted, but apparently he does not care. Okay, Lurker's coming up. <clears throat> Pathogen Glance also coming up here for Dark who apparently wants to be going into some Infestors right now, moving forward as well. That is also interesting. Three additional Command Centers building for the Terran player, and he just secured this high ground. Okay. Yeah, so look at the way that Bjorn is approaching this. If I would have covered the nicknames, would you have guessed this is, this is Bjorn? I think a lot of you would probably have said something like, for example, Maru. Right? I mean, that early game, that early game start was very Bjorn. With the command center first, no scout into double barracks and all that. So maybe you would have caught it from that, but... The defensive approach here is kind of interesting. Maybe a cure? Maybe you would have guessed cure? Bunny? Hmm. Factory number three, coming up as well. I'm interested to see what the late game here for Bjorn is gonna look like. So... Normally, at least in the past, we would see Battle Mech. Uh, he's looking to snipe a couple of those units. Will he get them? Yeah, he certainly will. Bit expensive, though, because they did decide to commit very far forward, and I think that's a trait that the Zerk will take any day of the week. But yeah, just to clarify, I don't know if I ever finished my sentence earlier. Uh, when the Ghost lines up one of those snipes on, for example, a Lurker, and the Lurker runs away far enough, the ability is cancelled. So there's a little bit more counterplay. Good transfusions right here on the Queens. I think everybody would have guessed Dark, though, if I... Whoa, why is he attacking his own queen? Brenda, stop it! Okay. I think there's a little bit... I think that's maybe because of the meta effect going down? I'm not exactly sure what this means. <laughs> no clue. Anyhow. Yeah, the players are inching towards one another. Biondo going for a much slower approach than what we normally see. I think in this kind of game, I mean, he felt really good, I think, in the early, uh, earlier stages of it. I, I, I am a little surprised with the passivity on the back of it. Because there was that moment where Dark was sitting on just Roaches and Ravagers. And he made that transition towards Vipers, Lurkers, the whole shebang. He also was droning up around that time, so now his, his position here is excellent. But I think there was room for the Terran player to try and punish that, but yeah, he decided not to. Uh, instead, he decided to go for additional command centers and build a bunch of ghosts and all that himself, but that is a little bit surprising to me. Normally, I feel like Bjorn would be the guy to, to punish that. Maybe he's also respecting Dark a little bit right there. He's like, okay, you know what? This guy is probably in Fester's hiding somewhere. <laughs> probably gonna get my whole army fungled. That weren't, but... Anyways, Infestors are coming up right now. Neural Parasite is just about to finish up as well. We also have a Greater Spire coming. Factory transition here from Bjorn, so after Marines and Marauders into Siege Tanks and Ghosts, we are now going to see a transition towards mechanical units here, together with those Ghosts. So it's probably going to be, yeah, Siege Tank Thors, Hellbat, that sort of thing, especially when he finds out that this is going to be a bunch of Brute Lords here. Yeah, but I gotta say, the passive approach here from Bjorn is a little surprising. Okay. He is ready to start trading out a bunch of those units. I would love to see armory upgrades as well, though, yeah. Like, we have plus two here for the siege tanks already for their attacks. I would love to see some additional upgrades there. Oh, liberators are also a little bit cheaper, right? Hello, scan? No scan, he didn't scan. Oh, it must not have had energy. <sighs> bunch of units end up going down here. Okay. Yeah, so siege tanks and Thors. Our Siege Tank, yes, well, Thors are coming up right now. I was going to say Ghosts and Siege Tanks, but Siege Tank and Thors turned out to be correct as well. 
I think a second armory would not be misplaced. He's got money for days. There's really no reason not to. Delaying those upgrades is going to make things more difficult than they need to be. Okay. So I haven't seen any super long macro games yet with the new patch. Uh, Gressfan does have one more base down here as well as another one up here. But that's it. Once that is done, um, that is going to be the end of it. <laughs> Can you hear my cat in the background? I think he's sitting right outside my door. Okay, he's quiet now as soon as I said the word cat, because classic. But he was whining a little bit outside my door. Now, I know some of you think that will be sad, okay? But the thing is, if I open the door right now and I'm like, Oh, buddy, I'm so sorry. If I do that, he's going to be doing it every single day, okay? Then suddenly, I mean, it would be kind of cute, I guess, to have cat noises in the background whenever I'm casting a game of StarCraft 2, but I don't think that's how I want to live my life. Anyways, Baylinks, they're not with their speedy upgrade yet. They were thinking about walking into the planetary, but it turns out that is not necessary because the lurkers will finish the job. A couple of Ravagers do get sniped as well. Some decent corrosive biles there too. I am not liking this position here for Bjorn all too much, and I say that knowing fully well that he's got a gajillion resources in the bank. I'm just, I'm just a little surprised by the passivity. I think this is maybe Bjorn saying, yo, I want to test how macro works on these maps. I'm just going to take all of my bases on my side of the map. That's where we are right now. I'm going to take everything, right? If you draw a line across the map, I will just take whatever I can and then we'll fight. If that is the case, however, I would really love to see Dark taking one of those forward bases, one of those outer bases and saturate those primarily. Because, yeah, mining out this base, pretty much a given, right? Mining out that base, pretty much a given as well. The outer bases are likely to be game deciding. And once the minerals are gone, they're gone. So if you can mine them, there's no chance your opponent is going to head on over in that direction as well. Anyhow, eight Brute Lords are coming up. Second Spire is coming up as well. Banelings, though, have their speedy upgrade now. But Marauders in the front are doing an excellent job. Okay, Brute Lords are faster now. Noticeably quicker. They are going to be able to retreat a little bit nicer as well. We'll see how this is going to play out. In my mind, so he sees them right now. Look at these Ferrari Brute Lords. In my mind, the Lurker and the Brute Lord fulfill a very similar task. But I guess in Dark's mind, he needs both of them. Like, they're both siege units, you know? They both control terrain primarily. Beautiful little move right there from the Zerg player. That's it. Still not enough to uh, prevent Brenda from getting sniped. Neural Parasite on the Ghosts to then, well, EMP the rest of the Ghosts. Always cute. Thors are now joining the battlefield as well. We already saw a couple, but more of them are on the production tab. Okay, there we go again. Another EMP. Yeah, this is annoying, right? Dark is one of those players who's capable of microing these Zerg armies incredibly well. And we always talk about Bjorn's Micro, and obviously his nickname, Micro Jackson, I think it's really funny. Because he kind of, you know, there are some pictures where he kind of looks like Micro Jackson as well. Or Micro, oh, well, anyway, he looks like Micro Jackson all the time. Either way, um, we always talk about Bjorn's Micro, but when it comes to late game unit control, Dark is actually insane. Like, how many hotkeys are these armies already requiring, right? Like, he's got so many units running around the map. I love, by the way, that he's not killing those SCVs. Gun saying, yo, I want to open up some supply. And Dark saying, yo, I don't care. I know I was hunting those workers for a while, but fungal growth over here. That is a painful one. Lurkers moving forward as well. All of this is difficult to control, man. There's units coming in from the side, though. Beyond doing an excellent job now. Okay, well, fungal growth once again shutting this down, too. And this is starting to look rather painful here for the Terran player, man. If he loses this clump of units, that's gonna suck for him. Luckily, a couple of Medivacs were close by, and he is gonna be able to get into that position. Dark Dome not hesitating, counterattacking up north, moving forward with the Lurkers down south. Brute Lords right now raining from the skies as well. Bailings were considering moving in, but again, they are not needed. There are siege tanks, or there's at least one. No, there's two of them over here. These uh, missile turrets are providing detection, but only for a little bit, because. One of them just ended up burning down. Thors, though, outranging those Brutes, doing an excellent job. The Brutelings obviously die a little bit quicker. Now the Banelings, once again, hunting down the Ghosts. Planetary Fortress, though, I think is going to fall here eventually. There it goes. And that is mission accomplished right here for Dark. Again, this base down south, probably not too far behind either. I'm impressed with the... Um 
Like, uh, how conservative he's been with the bank. Well, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I mean, he didn't blow them all up. I think it's very tempting to have that many bandings and just right click a planetary. Okay, yeah, that's still what we're gonna do. Okay, maybe you should have done it earlier. It probably would have been cheaper. But, anyways, caster curse right there. Fungal growth into Brute Lord Lurker is insane, but how in the world do you micro that? I don't know. Oh my god, man. Imagine, like, Vipers in the mix here as well. He doesn't have those anymore. They must have gotten destroyed. In theory, at least, an amazing choice. Beyond right now. 25 minutes into this game. We're only, like, halfway in, guys. Unless... Oh, you know what? There is a chance that whoever was observing this game uh, just didn't log out of StarCraft 2 and just kept the replay open. And then as soon as they close the game, that's when the replay timer hits. I wonder if that's possible. I mean, it seems to me... Uh, let me put it like this. It seems to me that Beyond is kind of dead right now. I've had games in the past where it's like a, actually like a 25 minute game, but the replay timer is like an hour long because whoever was observing the replay just never left the game and because of that, it's never quote unquote finished. Usually not the case, very rarely, but it seems to me though that Bion is kind of dead. Now I say that, it's not like Dark is rich anymore either. He's been smashing his piggy bank on more Brute Lords, more Infestors. Liberators are coming up. Advanced Ballistics, which is the ranged upgrade for those Liberators now also on the production tab. We're really late on a bunch of these upgrades, man. I think a second Armory, when we had like 6,000 resources in the bank, would have been a really good investment. Even just for Flyer attacks and Armor upgrades, I mean, that is... All of those upgrades are amazing, right? Like a single Armory in charge of researching all of the mech upgrades? Yeah, they're just a little far behind. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, we do have Double Spire here for Dark. Would not have minded seeing that a little sooner. For the for the Terran player, that is. I think for Dark, this is all looking excellent. Okay. This base is re-secured, though. Expansion down south, also once again available. Um, we are getting to the point where... The resources are running out. This expansion was previously controlled by the Zerg. He's now taking the same base, but then, well, on the other side of the map. I guess... Hmm. I guess if Bjorn can take this expansion, life is going to be much better for him again. But he needs to be careful, right? It's easy to overextend here. Maybe you remax first and then try to make a move on that. Yeah. I mean, even though he's lost a lot of his SCVs, right? And even though he lost his economy, he still has nine orbital commands. Nine orbital commands are going to be able to drop mules from the skies for, well, literally minutes. Okay. Spore crawlers coming up here. He spotted the liberators, I think, so he's decided, you know what? Got to mix in a couple of those things. Brute Lord Infester is back, apparently. We haven't seen a lot of Brutlord Infester. Like, this was considered to be the OP unit composition back in, like, 2012. And then, again, in, like, 2016. <laughs> I don't know exactly what the times were, but... Okay, that Nidus Worm, though, was produced... Or uh, that Nidus Network, rather, was produced ages ago. Now, finally, the worm is coming up. And I love the way that Bion... Or that J Dark Rudder does this. Look at how much damage that does. Oh, my God. Anyways, he's engaging up north with his main army, and then he's harassing down south with whatever units he's got. Now, I also kind of like this. Just, uh, yeah, shooting with the ghost, man. A little bit of target practice here. Not bad at all. Parasitic bomb, fungal growths, brute lords, queens. How does he micro this? I don't get it. It's all so fast and so easy to accidentally mess up. Anyways, can't help but notice that there is a tactical nuke now on the units tab. Would love to see uh, a little bit of use of that, but uh, he's checking if there was an Overseer providing vision. Can that one harass that base? That'd be kind of funny. Okay, so I thought Bjorn was down and out. But he's once again mustered up quite an army. And while his upgrades were a little slow, they are pretty dang good right now. Although, again, the Liberators do not have any of their attack upgrades, but there's only six of them, so maybe not the end of the world. That is one dead lurker. 
Just taking a ton of damage there. He doesn't know exactly where the infestors are, but as long as the scans can get ahead of this army, everything will be A. Okay. Okay. So. I think this is indeed a very long game, guys. Mostly because Dark decided to go from full bulldozer into full spellcaster. Or at least, you know, he's decided to uh, make a transition here as far as the pacing of this game goes. That's, this full growths are incredible, man. Dark has really found a new love for the Infestor lately. Like, I've casted a bunch of his games where he's just getting so much value out of them. Parasitic bombs. Okay, the Thors though are scary, right? So Brutlings do die quicker. So the Brutlings just have less life. The, the, the Brute Lords themselves are faster, but the Brutlings die quicker. Meaning that only a couple of Hellbats in front are probably all you really need. I mean, it's hard to say. The Hellbats are there to roast the Brutlings primarily. I think a couple more is not a bad idea. Yeah, so he makes four more. I've been interested in this, uh, this engagement, though. The Mass Thor versus Brute Lord situation, because that's one of my main concerns. Okay, a couple goes going down. But that's been one of my main concerns with this new multiplayer balance patch. How exactly is that late game going to shape up between Thors, Ghosts, and, well, Infestors and Brute Lords and all that? It's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting change. Well, if you're going to lose the Thors for free... Oh, no idea what they were doing there. Amazing plays, of course, here from Dark, but an incredibly sloppy mistake from Bjorn. For some reason, his army just walking in the wrong direction. Maybe this choke point over here is too tight for the Thors? I'm not exactly sure, but that is not what we want to see. Exactly while, uh, yeah, he's also losing most of his economy on the other side of the map. Okay. So Bjorn is now forced to smash his piggy bank. He doesn't have a lot of mining anymore, but again, he's got a lot of mules that he can drop. Most of the Brute Lords did also go down, or at least quite a few of them. So we've got ourselves uh, new Corruptors coming up. I wouldn't be surprised if literally all of those Corruptors are going to turn into Brute Lords here. So even though, yeah, 10, maybe 12 Brute Lords were nice, he's now going to go up to 13. Okay, actually kind of similar numbers. I think he just attack moved over in this direction or something, but maybe the Thors didn't fit in between that, or maybe not in between here. So they decided to go for the next closest path, and that path turned out to be right over in that direction. Not where you want to have them uh, positioned. Anyways, apparently the late game unit comp right here for Terran is Ghosts, Thors, and a couple Hellbats. That is interesting. There's no more, no more siege tanks here. I mean, worst case scenario for Dark, he could even go back to freaking Roaches. Roaches and Zorklings would not be a bad choice. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be the preferred choice, I don't think, but... Yeah. Dark, though, not saturating these gases quick enough up north. So he actually has very little gas income. It all comes down, I think, to these minerals over here. Because Dark, I mean, he's likely going to be able to mine that entire base... He's thinking about taking this expansion, but that is incredibly ambitious. It's not gonna happen, little drone. Okay, expansion down south gets harassed. A couple thousand minerals remaining over here, I think. Maybe a little less. Here's the Brute Lords again, though. Dark was saying, yo, this is my base, why are you here? This is a scary army, though. Love this counterattack here. Dark, um, yeah, now forced to split maybe his own units up as well. The problem is, if he commits everything to defending against these units, I think it's time for this army to move and kill that hatch. Yeah, so Dark thinking the same thing. Decides to add on a lot of spine crawlers. Infestors are also at least close by to provide fungal growth support. Bjorn probably would have considered it if he saw that entire army moving in that direction, but... God, this is a scary Zerk army, though. The problem is, right, with being so split up, is that Bjorn, he might just be taking a fight against the entirety of the Zerk army here very soon. Look at the changeling force here as well. Um, with only half his own units. So there's a couple of abductions. The snipes do go off on the vipers. I don't know if you want to fight this, Bjorn. I think you might want to back off, man. Yeah, so... 
Maybe losing a couple SCVs, backing off in this position while moving forward over here is not a bad idea. Thing is, both of these expansions have already been denied. Maybe put down a command center in this location, mule it up real quick, mine it before the Zerg can get back to that section of the map. Ah, this is really far forward though, Beyond these units are far away from home. He doesn't know exactly where the Zerk army is coming from. I mean, he sees it right now, I guess, through these scans, but he needs to be very cautious. Ah, uh, yeah, he's thinking about making that move up north, but now their spine crawlers and the static defense here for the Zerk is all finished. This is what I was worrying for, though. I've got a feeling that these units are not going home. It would be okay if he can at the same time kill an expansion up here, but he's spending a lot of time running around. There is still a tactical nuke available. But another assimilation apparently is successful. Snipes left, right, and center here as well for the Terran player. Trying to make the best out of this situation. Okay. Uh, he's gonna get maybe one or two more Brute Lords before inevitably losing all of these units. The hatchery up north though still lives and this expansion never went back to mining. Beyond right now, the player without any gas in the bank. You know what, I've been talking for a little while as if Bjorn is heavily losing this game. And I don't think that's really entirely fair. I don't think he's winning this. And his position has been quite dire now for a long time, but the trades have not been bad at all. If you look at the resources lost, he doesn't need to mine as much money here as, as Dark has, right? Like imagine the entire map mines out. He doesn't need to mine as much as Dark has. So even though he's been losing a few more units than I would have liked, and honestly, I wonder what's gonna... Like, if this game comes down to, like, the final couple hundred minerals, losing that army over here was really kind of rough. Um, as far as I can tell, at least. Like, he did kill a bunch of Zerg units there, but that was a particularly bad trade there for the Terran. Anyways, um, he's back up right now. Dark, that is, with a good amount of supply. Beyond going into heavy Hellbed production, which sure, will give him more supply, but I don't know if it's the units that he really needs. Well, well it's gonna be pretty good at deflecting those Zerklings. Okay, that drone. Drone number two. Tasked with building a hatchery over here, this one may very well succeed. This expansion still not acquired by Beyond. I think he could have had this one up and running for ages. A little surprised to see that. Maybe he doesn't quite realize exactly this position. Yeah, I think he feels like he's being pushed really hard, but the Zerg units have been mostly up north for the majority of the time. Okay. Queen's right now, pushing the creep forward as well, and now a hatchery is building in one of the Terran's bases. Then again, though, Bjorn has been mining one of the Zerg's bases for quite a while as well. Bjorn now with a lot of minerals in the bank. Maybe going back to Marines is a better choice, honestly. Like, uh, rather than Hellbats, I wonder if Marines would be a superior choice here instead. Anyhow, Zorkling run by over here, absolutely ravaging a mineral line. Terran army was far forward, it was ready to commit, but by the time they come back home to defend the mineral line here, all of the SCVs are gone, and so are the majority of the Zorklings. Dark seems like an absolute nightmare to play against, man. <laughs> like, honestly. The guy's everywhere. At least, you know, if you look at this from the entire view of the map, it seems like he's... like he's. It already seems like he's everywhere, right? From, from Bjorn's perspective, what he sees here the whole time is... Just every time he scans, he sees Zork units moving. Very oppressive player, that's for sure. Anyways, this attack was meant to happen about a minute ago. Yeah, Bjorn now not entirely sure anymore if he wants to commit. His army is still scary, though. We are one good engagement away from uh, the Terran player winning this. I've got a feeling he's not in the best of positions here, but it's not like Dark has that much anymore either, right? Yeah. I mean, he really needs to saturate this gas geyser. This refinery really needs to be saturated. Okay, well, you know what? This is not bad. The Zorklings are not going to be able to run and save this. The Queens instead. Look at the amount of Queens. We've got 18. 18 Queens and 18 Brute Lords. Look at that. Greater Spire goes down. The second Spire, the backup Spire, to get additional upgrades faster, also just about to go down. 
Now, once again, I do want to point out the upgrade situation because Dark is fully maxed when it comes to those upgrades. Bjorn still at only plus two armor and zero air upgrades. I mean, he doesn't have any air units anymore, I don't think, but yeah. Still noticeable. Okay, good EMP right there on the Queens. That is an oversight, though. He definitely should have the plus three mech armor at this point. Okay, dude, I love this little hellbed walk by. I thought a queen push would, or sorry, uh, a marine transition would not be a terrible idea, but these hellbats are actually paying for themselves right now. Didn't think that they were gonna be the ones in charge of killing the Zerk's tech, but brute lords and queens are the only units that can properly clean this up, and with the creep right now disappearing from this area, I've got a feeling that, yeah, Dark is just gonna commit everything up north. He's making a new infestation pit. I think he's going to have to rebuild all of his tech up here. But with what money? He doesn't have that much. Okay. Bjorn, starting to clear out the creep. He's been cleaning for a little while. I don't think defending this position is that important. The Brute Lord count is insane, yeah. Those uh, Thors are going to get picked off very easily. There are no Vipers in the mix. It's just Infestors and Queens here. Still a ton of uh, Ghosts available as well. Okay, fungal growth, trying to catch a couple of those units on the retreat. And the Brute Lords eventually get close enough to snipe one of the Thors and snipe one of the Ghosts. Second one, however, does manage to stay and, well, he backs off just barely in time. Hellbats in the meantime have been roasting whatever they can and essentially all of the tech of the Zerk is now gone. So the Infestation Pit was made just to make more Infestors. Yeah, so he does not have a spawning pool. That is an interesting situation to be in, too. So no more queens, no more zerklings. He can literally just make infestors. And a spawning pool comes up again, okay. Finally, we have a command center flying on over here. Yeah, there's a good amount of money remaining here. I think that's the right choice. Income wise, peaks and valleys the entire time. Couple more ghosts, though. Uh, barely managed to escape. Okay, so the Hellbats apparently satisfied with their jobs. They're now gonna continue dealing some damage over here if they can. We do need to scan in this position, and we do. So the Burrowed Zerkling there gets destroyed. Seeing that scan, though, seeing that Zerkling get the Knight is all that uh, Dark really needs to know. He knows that that expansion is gonna be taken very soon. With the spawning pool done, he can make sport crawlers again as well, so that's exactly what he does. Okay, snipes. How good are these snipes going to be? I feel like it's going to be the engagement between the ghosts, man. Yeah, the ghosts and the infestors are going to be so critical. Nice EMPs over here, but all of the fungal growths are starting to hurt. Can these ghosts get away? <laughs> Can't believe those helmets were just sleeping on the job there for a little bit, but that's because he's trying to fight at the same time in the middle of the map as well. Somehow, some way... Bjorn has got a good amount of income again. I'm actually very impressed. <laughs> I've been questioning some of his decision making, man, but ooh, massive fungal growth over here. He's got a good amount of money in the bank right now. There's the neural parasites once again. Banelings trying to hunt down wherever they can, decide to now engage on the left side of the map instead, trying to go after those ghosts. The ghosts do eventually blow up. Brute Lords, though, basically all destroyed. It's just queens remaining here, but those Terran units changing sites because of the neural parasites. Incredibly painful right now for Bjorn. He tried to come in from all angles, but Dark was all over that. Honestly, incredibly well controlled right there from the Zerk player. I mean, in his mind, he's like, dang it, I probably should have saved more of my Brute Lords and microed them backwards, but his prioritization right there was excellent. Really microing the units that he needed to micro. That's it. That's it. That's it. How much money is still remaining? Okay, it's about... 2.5k over here-ish in total, right? I should not be doing math. And there's quite a bit over here as well. So I think he may have like 4,000 minerals remaining here. You can see that Dark's army is bigger than that already. It's only 90 supply. He could fit in another 90, so he can max out about one more time here, I think. Maybe not with all of the gas-heavy unit, but he has... Yeah, he's gonna be able to max out if he mines out everything. For the Terran, in the meantime, uh, his army is a little bit cheaper because it's smaller. He's got uh, 250 minerals over here. Yeah, he's got less money. He's got less money here in total in this game. So where are these mules going? Hold up. <laughs> Have they been sneaking in a couple minerals there? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think the dark is... Yeah. Not gonna be all too happy about that. Yeah, they tried mining some... <laughs> they got a couple minerals. I mean, that's kind of neat. There might be still some additional resources here and there over the map, but no, I think it's actually getting to the point where everything is fully mined out. Um, We still have that nuke. That nuke was never used. I don't know why. Maybe you forgot about it. 21 infestors, 10 ghosts. Four brute lords, however. So we don't really need that many Thors again, ever. Yeah, I think spending the money right now back down to biological units might not be a terrible idea to infantry. The queens, they take up a lot of space and they look scary, but honestly, man, I hate to break it to you guys, but the queens are not that great at fighting. I mean, they do a lot of damage, but... You know, especially against, like, I don't know, like a couple of Liberators, maybe a couple Benchies in the early game, but... Their damage output is not nearly as consequential at this point in the game. So I feel like this army looks scarier than it actually is. Those Infestors, though, are horrifying. Imagine if they had infested Terrans still. That would be a disaster here for the Terran. Beautiful fungal growth once again. Okay. Beyond knows he needs to try and deny this base. It's critical. Zorkling run by over here. Uh, Bjorn is fully mined out. Bjorn has no income. Yep, zero mineral income right now for the Terran player. Dark still mining 1,200 minerals a minute. So what he's doing here is actually very smart. He's just sitting here waiting for his bases to run out. A new hive just finished up. Doesn't really matter. If he can get one fungal off, though, I know he's going to jump on this opportunity. Liberators, slow pushing forward. There's a fungal growth just to hurt it a little bit. Another Liberator stepping forward. With its flying feet. <laughs> a mule drops right now. I guess we're going to spend our final couple of minerals here on repairing those mules. Or repairing, rather, the Liberators with mules. So 20 minerals remaining. Couple of snipes, Queen's Doe transfusing as well. Not a lot of Brute Lords remaining anymore, but that's not our Hellbat, down the drain. The few SCVs that were still available as well, they now get pulled to the front. But Bjorn is creating a chokehold on this base. So the mining here from the Zerk has dwindled to only 600 minerals a minute. And with these running out over here, the problem here, yeah, is that there are now Vipers available. And I don't think that Bjorn knows of them. I don't think he's seen them. Blinding clouds, abductions, uh, even parasitic bombs here can all be amazing. So now the Viper showed themselves for the first time. There's a couple of abductions. Unexpected. The snipes do get queued up very rapidly, but that's the majority of the Liberators gone. Excellent move right there from our, uh, our Zerg player, but the hatchery is already destroyed. You can still long distance mine this, I suppose, but... Uh, at this point, there's only five workers, or nine workers remaining right here for Dark. Fungal growths do come up. Okay, there's enough energy on those Infestors as well for Chain Fungals continuously. That Liberator up in the air. Man, imagine if there were a couple more Liberators. That would be absolutely amazing. Brute Lord's taking a lot of damage, but Dark is transfusing them back up to full. God, man, high-level StarCraft is so freaking good. I can't get over this. Okay, there's another Fungal Growth coming up. Infestors did overstay their welcome. Those couple of Vipers, man, they absolutely changed the tide of battle. If that fight happened with, like, three more Liberators up in the air, I think it would have been a win for Bjorn. But in the end, it is Dark who obtains the victory in an amazing game of Terran versus Zerk.